Anya, you've worked on the modern synthesis of evolution, which came about, um, you know, 100 years or so after Darwinism, maybe a little less, uh, that um, took Darwinism to a new level. And uh, then, as time went on, we have now an extended evolutionary synthesis. But let's start with that modern synthesis, because that was the time when the, the fundamental Darwinism at least began to expand and, and take a broader view. And you focused on the nature of chance that formed an important part of the modern synthesis. Well, why is that the case, and what are the kinds of chance that was embedded within the modern synthesis? So in the 1920s and 30s, there were three major figures, Fisher, Haldane, and Wright, that developed a mathematical theory of evolution that integrated Darwin's ideas about natural selection with Mendelian genetics. So the idea was we can mathematically represent change in populations due to mutation, migration, selection, and this idea, drift, where drift is sort of like random sampling from one generation to the next. So if you reduce a population in size, you get a subset of those individuals who get passed on from one generation to the next. And so one of the big points of tension among the different authors of the early synthesis was this significance of drift random genetic drift. Um, and there were a variety of different senses of chance that I think that authors of the modern synthesis sometimes used interchangeably yeah. and not always precisely. The role for a philosopher to jump in there. Exactly. So philosophers have tried to sort of pull these apart and make it more precise, what, exactly what they were talking about. So there's one sense of chance that I think philosophers in general might be more familiar with, which is sort of fundamental indeterminism in nature, right? Nature not being law governed. Maybe at, from the bottom up, at the basis of sort of fundamental physics, there are some sort of fundamental Point. indeterministic processes. And most of the authors of the modern synthesis weren't really talking about that, though R.A. Fisher has a nice paper on it. <laughs> There's another sense of chance that I think is closer to what they were actually talking about in this, this idea of, of randomness, right? Random sampling. So when we think about rolling a die or playing a, I don't know, um, a game of chance, right? In those cases, if it's a sort of um, chance setup and you take a sample, you're gonna get a certain mm -hmm. kind of outcome. Then there's just this sort of chance and sen the sense of probability. Right? So when we talk about something being due to chance, we say it has a higher or lower probability. And then there's a, another sense of chance that I think the authors of the synthesis might have been referring to sometimes, which is unpredictable events, events like major storms or lightning striking and causing a fire in a forest. And sometimes they'll say, this was due to chance in that uh -huh. sense. Uh -huh. um, and then there's a final sense of chance they might have been referring to, which is in tension with selection. So many of the authors of the synthesis were really interested in the role of natural selection because they were sort of pulling together Darwin's ideas and Mendel's ideas. And so this sort of major tension between the role of drift and selection oh. was a big issue. And um, beca exactly because, by and large, drift is if you like, a force pushing in the opposite direction of selection. So if a trait has an adaptive advantage, it's more likely to increase in populations over time, except if by chance <laughs> alone, right, you have a smaller subset of individuals who just happen not to have that trait or may not have that trait as greater frequency. And so you're going to have, um, by chance alone, some individuals dropping out. Mm. And so sampling from one generation to the next can change the effects or the effectiveness of selection over time. And the people who developed the, the modern synthesis, when they used the word chance in different ways, it, it, it was blurred between all of those kinds, some more than others. They didn't necessarily mean the quantum, the uncertainty mm -hmm. of the fundamental uncertainty, but uh, some of those others are, are blurred. Now, would it make a difference in, in their theories, I would think it would in terms of what, what, which kind of chance they're talking about. Well, some in, in, in some ways, one kind of chance or one, one sense of chance is related to others. 
So unpredictable events like major storms or a meteor crashing right. to Earth right, right. can lead to chance in other senses, right? It can lead to random sampling or it could lead to a change in distribution of populations over time that has something akin to reducing the probability of this kind of outcome. Mm -hmm. And when the authors of the synthesis were precise, they, they specified that, but sometimes they ran the, the several senses of chance together. And, and how has this, um, the different definitions of chance continued uh, later on? I mean, do you still, do you s still see those same kinds of issues in the extended evolutionary synthesis and in modern conversation about chance, or is it now much more focused on, um, on, on random mutation in base pair sequences in molecular, on the molecular level? So there was something called the neutral theory of molecular evolution, which was developed by Moto Kimura in the 1960s or so. And this was the idea that at the molecular level, changes are kind of like a, you've heard of the molecular clock. Yeah. They're sort of random, right? And when Kimura first proposed that, there was a lot of uh, hullabaloo, right? Because people thought, hey, wait, no. Um, how can it be the case that at the genetic level you can have things occurring at random? Surely selection is really important in evolution. So first some people pushed back, but it turns out that it's, um, it's not necessarily inconsistent with natural selection playing a really important mm -hmm. causal role in evolution, that at the molecular level you can have turnover that doesn't make a significant difference to phenotype. Um, and in certain sequences, it doesn't make all that much of a difference, so you can use those as a clock. Mm. Um, so, yes, absolutely, there are these different senses of chance at play, and ideally, in principle, scientists are precise about which mm -hmm. sense they mean. And um, if they're not, you'll uh, be watching them. <laughs> yes. 